Hey everyone, Eric here. And today I want to share with you some of my tips for introducing some subtle variety to the same component that's been copied multiple times. Okay, so when I work with vegetation components, sometimes what I'll do is I'll copy the same tree over and over and over again. But then when I kind of stand back to look at it, I can it makes my composition feel a little bit stiff or rigid because it's the same component and it's the exact copy over and over again. So what I like to do is to go in and add some subtle variation in order to sort of mimic the way that vegetation is in real life. In which case, even if it's the same tree that's planted in the same location and it's the same size, you're still gonna get a little bit of variety. And ultimately, I think that's gonna make for a better design and a better composition. So join me and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so to save time, I've already arrayed my street trees here. Um, got them about 15 feet apart and there's 10 of them. So maybe from this angle, it looks okay. But if I spin around just a little bit here, you can see that repetition really starts to show. You're getting the same tree edge, the same trunk, the same height. It kind of makes my, my, my street tree design maybe here look a little bit flat, a little bit static. So let's look at a few different ways using just native tools to sort of break down that repetition just a little bit. First thing I wanna show you is just actually using the flip along. It's basically a built-in mirror tool. There's two different ways to do that, but I like the flip along because it's just, I don't know, it's easy to remember. Flip along sounds cool. So if you flip along the component's red axis, you can see that it just mirrors the component. So if you wanted to do multiples, of course you can do more than one at the same time. Go down to flip along, I'm right clicking to get the context menu up. Then I'm gonna to go to flip by red direction. And you can see that any ones that are selected will just flip it and so that it's a mirrored copy. Now another way to achieve that is actually using the scale tool. Some people prefer the scale tool just because it gives you a little bit more control. You don't have to worry about which axis and then of course you can change the scale um, factor if you want. In this case, what I'm gonna do is select this. If you want, I'll go over and grab the scale tool from the toolbar. I'm used to using keyboard shortcuts. Grab the scale tool, come over here. And then what you wanna do, depending on whether it has a thickness or not, if it doesn't have a thickness, you're fine. If it does, you wanna grab that middle handle and then pull it. You can see when I do that, it's actually I'm losing the position of the trunk. You can hold down the option alt modifier and what it does is you can see it locks the position of the trunk so that stays centered. And then you can see I'm basically just flipping it the same way using the mirror tool. I'm gonna to hit negative one for the scale factor. It essentially achieves the same thing that I just did with the flip along, but it just gives me some control because I can see it happen. I don't have to worry about which axis that I'm flipping along. Let me do that one more time, but I'll do a little bit quicker just so I'm not talking over it. Grab that scale tool, hold down the modifier, and negative one, I went ahead and flipped that. So that's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and stand back for a second and see how that's, what kind of variety that that's introduced for us. Um, yeah, I don't know. You don't get that same repetitive edge. When you look at it from the side, you're not getting that same, you know, tree edge over and over again. And so it's already starting to make a little bit of a difference. So let's do the next one now. Let's look at using the scale tool again, but instead of using it to mirror, we're gonna use it to scale, stretch, and squash in order to change the shape of the tree. One thing I'll point out here that everything I'm doing, I'm doing it to the outside of the component container. I'm not going inside of the component and then scaling that. If you do that, what it's gonna do, it's gonna scale it for all of them because it's a component. So instead what I'm doing is actually I'm gonna pick one or two at random, doesn't matter. I'm gonna to switch to my scale tool. Again, I'm using this shortcut, I'm um, using my keyboard shortcut because I'm used to doing that. It's S on the keyboard. And then grabbing the corner, I can just make a uniform scale. So if I want some of my trees, oh, I lost that, let me do that again. So if I want some of my trees to either be slightly bigger or slightly smaller, I can just go really quickly, select scale S on my keyboard, either up or down, and that's a uniform scale. So it's gonna preserve the proportions of the tree. Now, if we wanted to do that same scale, but not have it be uniform, that's okay. We just don't grab it from the corner. So whichever tree you wanna scale, in this case, this one here, when you use the scale tool again, you can either 
stretch it, which I'm calling a squash. And the reason why is because it feels like you're putting weight down on the top. It's getting it, it's making it fatter. Or the stretch uh, or the squish, depending on how you want to think about it, it's basically like pushing it together. It's making it skinnier. So the weight of the tree goes up. So in this case, depending on whether you want to squash it, make it look a little fatter, or if you want to stretch it and make it look a little skinnier, you can do that too. And remember, this is to the outside of the component. So if I go in for any reason at any time, and I just want to maybe use the freehand tool to create a little opening in the canopy, you'll notice, I'll delete that, it's going to do it to all of them because I'm just scaling the outside of the component. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at our side view here. Definitely starting to get a little bit more of that variation that I'm looking for. Um, now you can combine those two, the scales, in which case I've squished this one, but now I want to bring it so it's not so small. Remember, I'm looking for subtle variations. In this case, I'm going to bring that one up so it's both kind of fatter, but it's also more in line with the size of the trees, of my other trees here. So now that basically looks at orientation. We've looked at sort of the size and sort of the shape of the canopy, but one more thing you're seeing here that's the same is that they're all the same color green. And in nature, you're going to find that there's going to be subtle tone variations depending on maybe how much light it gets or depending on how much water it gets. So let's go ahead and start by, I'm going to bring up my paint bucket tool using B on the keyboard. And I'm going to select the green that's in there now. And I'm actually going to remove it from the model. When it says replace, it's going to replace it with the default material. And I'm doing this on purpose because the material usually in most components, it's applied to the face. So if I wanted to paint, for example, let me undo that. If I wanted to change the color of the tree, I'm just gonna pick, I don't know, I'll use my color wheel. Give me a second, I'm just gonna pick maybe a darker green. If I do that, it's gonna do it as you can see to all of them. So by going back and removing, I'll do that one more time, I'm gonna remove the green that is on the face currently what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to place a color on outside of the component. So just like I, I smeared and squished and scaled the, the component container, I can do the same thing with my materials. So let's go ahead and grab a nice kind of, I don't know, I'm trying, I'm aiming for sort of more of a muted green. And I can actually paint directly on top of the component by just clicking on it here. But this is where it gets kind of fun. I can just using my slider, I can just make a lighter tree or using my slider the other way, I can make a darker tree. So I'm just kind of picking these really, I'm trying to be subtle. I'm not, I don't want to do a ton of, of really dark or really light. And of course, if I wanted to do a hue shift and say I want a little bit more yellow, and then in case maybe I'm going this way and I say, yeah, I want a little bit more green, just basically play with the hue, um, play with the saturation. And what you're getting is what you're going to get is again the same tree it's still a component it still is saving all the component features of having the same this using the same tree over and over again but in this case i've introduced quite a bit of a bit of variety um, using only color applied to the outside of the component itself so again when i go back and look at my same view i'm seeing that this is a much more dynamic composition and um, you know something where it might be faster if you're using um, an extension or something and you're placing hundreds of trees, it might be more work to place individual trees. Um, in this case, uh, it's way faster just to scatter a bunch of trees and then we can go in and sort of customize them after the fact, depending on your needs. So lastly, and I, I'm saving this for last, the last tip here is of course, you can always go in and pick an, a special tree here and say, I wanna make that unique. So now all of a sudden that is a separate component. So anything I do to this tree is going to be unique compared to all the other ones. For example, if this trunk just looked needed to be fatter because I wanted it to read as maybe a different species, I'm going to select the trunk itself. I'm going to group it and I'm going to just make that a little bit fatter, um, make that a little bit of a fatter trunk. So now all of a sudden, because I'm actually editing the geometry inside of that component in order to make this one look different, I had to go inside, I had to make it unique first, otherwise the trunk would um, fatten up for all of them. So that's it for my quick tips for adding some subtle variety to the same copied component.
Hopefully you found something useful in this video. And as always, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe below. We actually read the comments, and if you've got either a different or better way to add variety, obviously there's extensions we can use as well that accomplishes similar tasks, let us know, and we'd be happy to carry on the conversation there. So thank you so much, and as always, see you next time.